here. So the first one, and probably the most applicable is AP invoice automation with an ERP system. So unlike a lot of capture solutions, we have what we call custom advanced indexing forms. And what this allows us to do is automate and put different trigger points in the UI itself. So you can see there on the screen and that screenshot on the right in the header, footer, line items, you see a reject invoice button, you see a search for PO button. So all these different elements you would typically see in an ECM or a workflow where we can actually do both. So our job workflow, you could basically have branching conditions, approvals, rejections. And as you can see here, we can do data validation with an ERP system. So that's one of the more common three-way match type scenario where you're taking a purchase order, you're taking a packing list, you're taking an invoice and you're matching them together. Uh, there's a lot of ways that that can happen. But you know, with our ability to use what we call custom queues, you can see there in the screenshot below, rejected invoices, uh, items that need attention, we can look after using this solution. All right, so what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna get over to our client. This is our HTML client, our browser client. And you can see I'm on the home tab and each one of these uh, indexing tabs can be customizable. Uh, you can see I have all index batches, rejected, index ready. Um, so for our first one, I'm just gonna go up here and hit new batch and say, hey, I wanna capture an ERP. And I'm gonna go and grab my demo documents and I'm gonna grab, in this case, a five page TIFF file. And the first thing it does is it separates each one of the invoices into its own logical document set. And then I just hit save. And these documents are now placed in our queue. So the capture side, what you just saw can be done through a scanner. That could be automated through monitoring a hot folder, uh, monitoring an FTP site, uh, monitoring an API call, whatever it is. Ultimately, we now have our new batches today. Here's the batch that we just brought in. I double click on it and it loads in our window. So on the left, you can see in red, it brings us to the first low confidence or issue document. You can see here in the right, it's saying purchase order not found. I hit my search for PO. I select the appropriate PO associated with that invoice. You can see there is a duplicate invoice detection now. I'm gonna select my reject invoice. Now, the benefit here is because we can control this user interface, we're able to really embed any type of logic you can think about as part of the process. Now, a lot of workflow engines, you know, a lot as a solution designer, I would always have to go get an ECM system with a full business process management BPM engine and to do a lot of this work. Um, we don't need that in the expense associated with that. So here I tab out and you can see now it's okay. I hit my next button and you notice document two is not read any longer. So as we're going through here and we're adjudicating and you can see now PO has been found, hit the next button, it's bringing us to the next issue. Incorrect total, I can see it's pulling, uh, for some reason the extended amount is freight, we don't wanna do that. Tab out, hit next, close this batch. And what's gonna happen is that one document I hit rejected invoices for is now gonna be placed in its own queue. So there's actually a fork condition built in that will now allow the other four documents that had no issue to move forward in the process. This particular document that I rejected is now in a rejected queue that a notification can be sent and an adjudicator can come and resolve this issue. We're gonna be doing a similar type process, but we're not gonna be integrating with the ERP here. We're gonna be doing uh, an AP invoice with line item extraction across four engines. Um, and these are all embedded in our application. And so one of the neat things here is not only semi-structured extraction, but the multi-page line item pagination. So if you do have a five page invoice and those line items roll to each page, the system is gonna be smart enough to know to paginate to each page and extract the tabular data. Um, I will also say we don't charge for tabular data, meaning uh, most IDP platforms will have a license for tabular data extraction. We don't, it's all inclusive. Um, now in this particular case, so basically 
to set this up is super easy. Um, each one of our extraction profiles comes with pre-built connectors. Invoices is one that all of the cloud AI engines have. So I literally just select invoice from the dropdown in the setup, and I select auto fill, and it pulls all the fields that Azure, AWS, Google knows as part of their pre-built invoice parser, and it maps it to my document class index fields. And that's what you see in this little screenshot below. And there's certain tabular fields and certain um, header fields. So let's take a look here. I'm going to get to my screen here, and uh, I'm going to come and create a new batch, and we're going to select our uh, four multi-cloud AP invoices. So in this particular case, we're going to be using uh, these five different documents. And essentially, the each cloud engine will, and again, this we haven't trained it. This is what Azure AWS just returns out of the box. So we're not going to be, you know, we're not like, hey, look in this region for this, or this is the table column for this. This is just what you get out of the box. Now, I've already processed these just for time's sake. So I'm going to open up our batch here. And you can see on this particular document um, what each cloud engine, and again, we're using our advanced indexing form here to show side by side. You can see that for some reason, Abby wants to grab, I don't know, it's just not grabbing the right area. When I click in the actual field, you'll see where it's actually highlights in yellow on the document itself, um, invoice number. So yeah, in the most cases here, it's extracted the right data. Um, I would say that Abby, which is quite a bit more expensive, um, did a, a did a poor job on this one. Now, if we go to the next one, you can see here very similar. As if you're looking at the confidence indicators, you can see freight zero, freight zero, and then we can also look at line item details. This is what line items. Now, Azure it looks like they pulled both the part number and the description field. So. So again, these are the pre-built ones. You can't, it's, Azure's going to give you what it gives you. Now, Azure gives you what they call a custom model builder where we can come in and actually say, hey, you know what, this, this invoice isn't reading quite well. So we can go in and create a custom model where Azure could be trained. Same thing with Google and same thing with Abby. Uh, AWS just doesn't have that capability. You get what you get as it relates to AWS and their results. Um, and you can see here, it does generally well. I find that uh, AWS is limited in terms of its line item e extraction capability. It only gives you three line items, uh, in this case, uh, part number or description quantity and unit cost, whereas the other cloud engines will give you quite a bit more. Confidence indicators are where, uh, is basically how we stop the human to look at those specific areas. Okay, and, and you can you can, you can set yep. that as you as you develop yep. and, and uh, test your system. You know, the, this is the AI saying, "I'm 80% sure that this data is correct, 70% sure." And as you you know go through the first however many documents you want to do when you're first testing your system, you'll realize that you know at 80% it's actually right every time, or at 70 or at 90, or whatever you decide. Then you set that threshold below which it flags it for a human to come double check it uh, without stopping the whole system. Everything else keeps going. It puts these aside. Um, if they're below a certain threshold that you can set. Exactly. That's all customizable. And again, uh, lots of rules you can build in here. Like for instance, if it got under 75% and you used Azure as your primary engine, go out to Google and have Google try it and see what it extracts. So you can do these branching, um, leveraging the AI engines. And in certain cases, pre-built, Invoice processors from these AI cloud engines are less expensive, like a fifth of the cost of custom ones. So clearly you want to try the pre-built ones first, but if you're having trouble, we can branch and go out to one of our custom models too. 